Hello and welcome to the Vegan Corner. You have arrived on the second recipe dedicated to our friend Freely the Banana Girl. She once told us that lasagna is one of her favorite dishes and who better than a couple of Italian chefs to attempt to create a good version of this popular and traditional recipe? Well, we are definitely up for the task, so let's go ahead and prepare some stunning lasagna. To begin with, let's chop a few veggies we need. So take the carrots, the onions and the celery and dice them as finely as you desire. We like to chop them finely, but that's not really necessary, so feel free to go for the size that you prefer. For the bechamel sauce, place a saucepan over a medium heat and tip in the dry ingredients followed by the milk. Whisk the ingredients properly to disperse the starch. Now, swap the whisk for a spatula and start stirring the ingredients. As soon as the milk is warm, you can add in the vegan butter and keep stirring to dissolve it. The butter adds some richness to the sauce, but it is not mandatory to use it. Stir constantly until the sauce thickens and reaches boiling point, and then turn off the heat. Let the sauce cool down completely before using it. For the tomato sauce, take a pan, place it over a medium heat and tip in the onions, the carrots, the celery and the passata. Clean the bottle of passata with the water from the recipe and add the tomato water to the pan. How Italian of me! Add in the garlic granules, the miso paste and the baking soda. Now bring the sauce to the boil, cover the pan with the lid, turn the heat down to the minimum and cook the sauce for 15 minutes. If your passata is already quite thick, you might want to adjust the cooking time to prevent it from becoming excessively thick. In the meantime, you can rehydrate the TVP by placing it into a bowl, covering it with boiling water and letting it stand for one minute. Once the time has elapsed, drain it and squeeze out the excess water. If you don't want to use TVP, also known as textured vegetable protein, you will find some substitutes in the description below. Once the 15 minutes have elapsed, remove the lid from the pan, add in the TVP, the chopped rosemary and a dash of black pepper if desired. By now you should know the drill to perfection, so stir the ingredients together, bring the liquid back to the boil, cover the pan with the lid and let the sauce simmer for another 15 minutes over the lowest heat or until reasonably thick. It's not really my fault if cooking techniques are repetitive, what I do care about are the results, so if covering and stirring is all we need to do to get great food in return, perfect. Once the time has elapsed, turn off the heat and let the sauce cool down completely before using it. Since the sauce is a key component of the final lasagna, make sure to taste it and adjust the salt if necessary. Believe it or not, we are ready to layer the final lasagna, which is likely to be the easiest of the tasks of this recipe. Actually no, the easiest thing to do is to preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 360 degrees Fahrenheit, which you can do right now. For the sake of being thorough, here we are using a 23cm 9 inch square oven dish. To build the final lasagna, dip some of the ragu into the dish, followed by some of the bechamel, and evenly spread the ingredients. By now it should be clear to you how many things you could do with this sauce apart from lasagna, so please don't be afraid of using this delicious looking ragu to make the ultimate pasta or rice dish. Now place a layer of pasta on top of the filling, add more ragu and bechamel on top of it, and also a layer of vegan cheese if desired. Keep alternating a layer of pasta to a layer of filling until you run out of ingredients, which in our case happened after the fourth layer of pasta. To get an even more appealing lasagna, add a generous layer of bechamel sauce on top of the last layer and also a good quantity of meltable vegan cheese. The lasagna is now ready to be cooked, so place it into the preheated oven and bake it for 30 minutes or until it looks like this. I feel that adding words here would be a total waste of your time, and if you like lasagna, I'm sure that you are perfectly able to tell how good this version is. To get a lasagna that perfectly keeps its shape, let it cool down for 10 to 15 minutes before slicing it and serving it. I don't actually remember how standard lasagna used to taste like, however, what I do vividly remember is how much I used to love them, and I can honestly say that I've never loved a lasagna dish as much as this one. It's decadent, beautiful, and also delicious. If you enjoyed today's video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up before moving on and subscribe if you haven't already. Many thanks for watching and on to the next video. See you soon!